If you're a fan of the Pirates of the Caribbean series, then you are probably familiar with the weird but kind of cute rock crabs that help Jack Sparrow escape from Davy Jones' locker. When Jack first stumbled upon one of them, they seemed to be just flat, pale rocks, but for some reason, no matter how many times Jack threw it, it just kept popping up right next to him, even after his comical attempt to shoot away. Eventually, Jack comes to realize that they were not just some smooth, inanimate landscape, but rather some sort of crab species that could essentially fold itself up, making its shell look like just a plain old stone. After revealing themselves, of course, they played a crucial part in Jack eventually being able to escape from Davy Jones' locker. And as the audience, we know how Jack ended up there in the first place. He was thrown in there because he was long overdue on a deal he made with Davy Jones for becoming the captain of the Black Pearl. After dodging Davy Jones for quite a bit, he was thrown into the locker to be stuck in an almost purgatory-like state for an eternity. But this begs a couple of questions. What are these rock crabs, and why would the crabs want to help Jack escape from the locker? A lot of people originally believed that they weren't just crabs, but in fact, an extension of Calypso. Either Calypso had powers and part of her soul within the locker, or she was the one communicating and guiding them as they helped Jack escape. This would be an easy explanation, especially since we see Calypso communicating with one later on after Jack escapes. And it also explained how she turned into a bunch of them when her soul was released from her body. However, as it would turn out, this is actually not the case. It is true that the rock crabs are related to Calypso in a way, but not in the way that was previously theorized. In fact, these crabs in Davy Jones' locker were acting completely independent of Calypso the entire time they were helping Jack escape, and that's because they were not an extension of Calypso, but rather independent souls trapped there as well. And that's exactly what we are going to discuss in today's video. So make sure to stay until the end for the entire relationship between the rock crabs and Calypso. But before we go any further, if you are a fan of all things Disney and Pixar, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button to ensure that you don't miss any of our magical uploads. If you're like most people, you were probably wondering what the rock crabs were doing in Davy Jones' locker in the first place. Why would there be crabs in a seemingly endless desert that is otherwise devoid of life? Well, for that answer, we need to take a look at the origin behind Davy Jones' locker. Davy Jones' locker essentially refers to the bottom of the sea, or seafloor, where many ships had met their fate and lay stranded. It basically became a metaphor used by sailors when they were referring to someone drowning at sea or a ship being pulled under in the waters so deep that the bodies of the people, as well as the ship, would never be seen again. They had been dragged down to Davy Jones' locker. As for the being Davy Jones himself, he was more of what they call nautical superstition. He was pretty much a sailor's version of the devil or the boogeyman, a scapegoat to place the blame if anything should go wrong at sea. Some tales even mention that he was a pub owner on an island frequently visited by sailors and who would actually kidnap those sailors never to be heard from again. But back to the original lore, Davy Jones' locker was basically a reference to the resting place of anyone who had become a victim to the ocean's wrath. This is where the theory pulls its reasoning from. You see, the crabs that we see were not originally crabs, and instead, they were something with a much darker origin. The crabs themselves were likely just other lost souls that found themselves damned to spend eternity in the locker. For whatever reason, they had made a deal with Davy Jones. Something went wrong, and they found themselves trapped. And what started out as a normal soul, the same way we see Jack's, ended up morphing into a seemingly lifeless rock. I mean, after an eternity in a seemingly like desert, it makes sense that the souls lost a lot of their mental sanity, causing everything about them to break down and become monotonous and unfeeling, like a rock. Still, life within them of course, but not much consciousness or complex thinking, essentially spending the rest of its existence in standby mode, just laying in the sun in an endless sea of sand with no hope of ever making it out. So, even if the crabs had once been human, why would they go out of their way to help Jack of all people? Why not one of the many souls before his that ended up turning into shells of their former selves? Perhaps, at first at least, it was just simple curiosity after years upon years of nothing happening at all. Seemingly out of nowhere, a fresh and new soul appears that doesn't seem like the rest, specifically a crazy pirate man and his ship. And I mean, at this point in the movie, Jack had already seemed to succumb to a little bit of madness. We see him on his ship, basically taking control of the other Jacks and having them all work together to hoist up the sails to get the ship moving. 
a little unhinged if you ask me. It probably sparked a little bit of interest in the first rock crab to go and check it out. And that's when we see Jack jump down onto the sand and notice the seemingly normal looking stone and throw it to the side. The interaction coupled with Jack's craziness probably piqued the curiosity of the crab and eventually the rest of the other crabs. But then this leads us to the next question. Even if they were curious about this abnormal and new soul, what made these rock crabs know to take him and his ship to water? Well, there are a couple of possibilities with this one. Though the original rock crab had initially only approached Jack out of curiosity, it's possible that it knew there was something different about him. Maybe it knew that Jack wasn't supposed to be there. Also, after Jack noticed the rock again, instead of throwing it, he does something kind of weird. After first attempting to shoo it away, he then decided to pick it up and lick it. And it was only after he licked the rock and collapsed from trying to move the black pearl on his own that we see the rock reveal its true form, almost as if it had been awoken from its endless rest under the beating sun. What if, when Jack licked the rock crab, the crab felt the moisture on Jack's tongue and realized that he really didn't belong there? Or felt this sense that something was out of place? Everything else in the surrounding area was literally as dry as the desert, but not Jack. And then, upon realizing that Jack was out of place and watching him collapse from the heat and exhaustion, the rock crab realized, either consciously or unconsciously, that Jack was either looking for water or was, at the very least, in desperate need of some. This is when the signal went out, and all of the other rocks woke up from their slumber, revealing their true crab selves as well. Then they all banded together and managed to prop themselves underneath the hole of the black pearl. And almost like a river, they started flowing over top one another, pushing the ship forward to the nearest source of water that they knew of, and thus, out of Davy Jones' locker. And although we like to think that the rock crabs did this out of the empathy of their hearts, not wanting Jack to end up sharing the same fate as them, their motive was more than likely just a reaction. They felt water and moved towards it. It was something different than the hot desert they were stuck in, and did this out of reactionary purposes rather than inherent kindness or compassion. Because remember, at this point, they are still souls and alive in a way. But their souls don't have the mental capacity anymore for complex thinking or rational, let alone feelings. Symptoms of being in the locker for an eternity. But here's where it gets even more interesting. When the crabs helped Jack out of Davy Jones' locker, a lot of people assumed, and justifiably so, that Calypso gave her assistance and played a part in Jack's escape. But there are several reasons why this cannot be the case. Now, though she was a goddess, evidence shows us that it's not likely that she played any role in helping Jack escape. For instance, the movie makes it clear that the rock crabs have been in the locker for an immensely long amount of time. They had likely been there long enough for their souls to turn into these rock-like creatures. And unless Calypso somehow foresaw Jack being stuck in Davy Jones' locker many lifetimes before it actually happened, it isn't likely that she put them there. Plus, even if she had wanted to put the crabs into the locker to assist Jack, how would she have managed that? I mean, sure, she's a goddess, but as you can see in the movie, her powers aren't endless. They do have boundaries, and it seems like anything dealing within the realm of Davy Jones is out of their reach. Another thing to think about is if Calypso placed the rock crabs there to help Jack out, why would they have waited so long to help him? Jack had been strolling about the ship and then attempting to move it on his own for a while before the crabs sprung into action. And it seems like they only woke up after Jack carelessly licked one of them and then threw it back into the sand. If Calypso were controlling them, it's highly unlikely that Jack would have needed to lick it before it revealed itself to him. Calypso herself even pointed out how smart Jack was for basically doing the impossible and escaping Davy Jones' locker. And the theory points out that it's doubtful that she would be thinking that if she had been the reason for his escape rather than just an onlooker. So, what this theory has led us to believe is that instead of actually telling the crabs what to do, Calypso's communication is more so her just gathering information about what they have either seen or what they know. She may be able to talk to them, but she can't command them. Towards the end of the film, we see Calypso herself actually turn into a giant mound of these crab creatures, much like many of the mortals have before her. Perhaps this was the movie's way of letting us know that her soul had officially exited her human body and moved on to its eternal form the crab. There is no doubt about it that Captain Jack Sparrow is one of the most cunning and also luckiest Disney characters in existence. Having escaped what would have been certain doom for almost anyone else on countless occasions really makes him the fantastic pirate we know him as in the movies. What do you think? Was it Calypso telling the rock crabs to help Jack? Or did they do it on their own? Be sure to let us know. 
That's all Disney fans. Let us know what you thought of this video in the comments and like and subscribe for more magically packed videos.